Ameloblastoma, Wikipedia article audio. Ameloblastoma is a rare, benign, or cancerous tumor of odontogenic epithelium much more commonly appearing in the lower jaw than the upper jaw. It was recognized in 1827 by Cusack. This type of odontogenic neoplasm was designated as an adamantinoma in 1885 by the French physician Louis Charles Malassé. It was finally renamed to the modern name amyloblastoma in 1930 by Ivy and Churchill. While these tumors are rarely malignant or metastatic, and progress slowly, the resulting lesions can cause severe abnormalities of the face and jaw. Additionally, because abnormal cell growth easily infiltrates and destroys surrounding bony tissues, wide surgical excision is required to treat this disorder. If an aggressive tumor is left untreated, it can obstruct the nasal and oral airways making it impossible to breathe without oropharyngeal intervention. Subtypes Clinical Features There are three main clinical subtypes of amyloblastoma, unicystic, multicystic, peripheral. The peripheral subtype composes 2% of all amyloblastomas. Of all amyloblastomas in younger patients, unicystic amyloblastomas represent 6% of the cases. A fourth subtype, malignant, has been considered by some oncologic specialists, however, this form of the tumor is rare and may be simply a manifestation of one of the three main subtypes. Amyloblastoma also occurs in long bones, and another variant is craniopharyngioma. Amyloblastomas are often associated with the presence of unerupted teeth. Symptoms include painless swelling, facial deformity if severe enough, pain if the swelling impinges on other structures, loose teeth, ulcers, and periodontal disease. Lesions will occur in the mandible and maxilla, although 75% occur in the ascending ramus area and will result in extensive and grotesque deformities of the mandible and maxilla. In the maxilla it can extend into the maxillary sinus and floor of the nose. The lesion has a tendency to expand the bony cortices because slow growth rate of the lesion allows time for periosteum to develop thin shell of bone ahead of the expanding lesion. This shell of bone cracks when palpated and this phenomenon is referred to as egg shell cracking or crepitus, an important diagnostic feature. Amyloblastoma is tentatively diagnosed through radiographic examination and must be confirmed by histological examination. Radiographically, it appears as a lucency in the bone of varying size and features sometimes it is a single, well-demarcated lesion whereas it often demonstrates as a multiloculated soap bubble appearance. Resorption of roots of involved teeth can be seen in some cases but is not unique to amyloblastoma. The disease is most often found in the posterior body and angle of the mandible, but can occur anywhere in either the maxilla or mandible. The radiodensity of an amyloblastoma is about 30 Hounsfield units, which is about the same as keratocystic odontogenic tumors. Yet, Amelioblastomas show more bone expansion and seldom show high-density areas. Histopathology will show cells that have the tendency to move the nucleus away from the basement membrane. This process is referred to as reverse polarization. The follicular type will have outer arrangement of columnar or palisade amyloblast-like cells and inner zone of triangular-shaped cells resembling stellate reticulum in Bell stage. The central cells sometimes degenerate to form central microcysts. The plexiform type has epithelium that proliferates in a fishnet pattern. The plexiform amyloblastoma shows epithelium proliferating in a cord-like fashion, hence the name plexiform. 
there are layers of cells in between the proliferating epithelium with a well-formed desmosomal junctions, simulating spindle cell layers. Diagnostic Imaging The six different histopathological variants of ameloblastoma are desmoplastic, granular cell, basal cell, plexiform, follicular, and acanthematous. The acanthematous variant is extremely rare. Histopathology One third of ameloblastomas are plexiform, one third are follicular. Other variants such as acanthematous occur in older patients. In one center, desmoplastic ameloblastomas represented about 9% of all ameloblastomas encountered. The adenoid variant of ameloblastoma has been recently introduced, but still very rare. While chemotherapy, radiation therapy, curatage, and liquid nitrogen have been effective in some cases of ameloblastoma, surgical resection or enucleation remains the most definitive treatment for this condition. In a detailed study of 345 patients, chemotherapy and radiation therapy seemed to be contraindicated for the treatment of ameloblastomas. Thus, surgery is the most common treatment of this tumor. Because of the invasive nature of the growth, excision of normal tissue near the tumor margin is often required. Some have likened the disease to basal cell carcinoma in its tendency to spread to adjacent bony and sometimes soft tissues without metastasizing. While rarely not a cancer that actually invades adjacent tissues, ameloblastoma is suspected to spread to adjacent areas of the jawbone via marrow space. Thus, wide surgical margins that are clear of disease are required for a good prognosis. This is very much like surgical treatment of cancer. Often, treatment requires excision of entire portions of the jaw. Variants Radiation is ineffective in many cases of ameloblastoma. There have also been reports of sarcoma being induced as the result of using radiation to treat ameloblastoma. Chemotherapy is also often ineffective. However, there is some controversy regarding this and some indication that some ameloblastomas might be more responsive to radiation than previously thought. Treatment There is evidence that suppression of matrix metalloproteinase 2 may inhibit the local invasiveness of ameloblastoma, however, this was only demonstrated in vitro. There is also some research suggesting that alpha 5 beta 1 INTE grin may participate in the local invasiveness of ameloblastomas. Molecular Biology A recent study discovered a high frequency of BRAFV600 e mutations in solid slash multicystic ameloblastoma. These data suggests drugs targeting mutant BRAF as potential novel therapies for ameloblastoma. Recurrence is common, although the recurrence rates for block resection followed by bone graft are lower than those of enucleation and curatage. Follicular variants appear to recur more than plexiform variants. Unicystic tumors recur less frequently than non-unicystic tumors. Persistent follow-up examination is essential for managing ameloblastoma. Follow-up should occur at regular intervals for at least 10 years. Follow-up is important, because 50% of all recurrences occur within 5 years post-operatively. Recurrence within a bone graft does occur, but is less common. Seeding to the bone graft is suspected as a cause of recurrence. The recurrences in these cases seem to stem from the soft tissues, especially the adjacent periosteum. Recurrence has been reported to occur as many as 36 years after treatment. Recurrence To reduce the likelihood of recurrence within grafted bone, 
meticulous surgery with attention to the adjacent soft tissues is required. The annual incidence rates per million for amyloblastomas are 1.96, 1.20, 0.18 and 0.44 for black males, black females, white males and white females respectively. Amyloblastomas account for about 1% of all oral tumors and about 18% of odontogenic tumors. Men and women tend to be equally affected, although women tend to be four years younger than men when tumors first occur and tumors appear to be larger in females. Epidemiology <laughs>